All right, today we're going to do some MC4 connectors on some solar uh, photovoltaic array wire or otherwise known as PV wire. Okay, this is 10 gauge wire, it's double jacketed, and um, some of it's not that way, but they're always a lot thicker than your regular wire, and that's because it um, has to meet certain standards for solar. <clears throat> so a 10 gauge wire, let's see if I have some laying around here. Um, they have a spool of it behind me. How did they get to it? Okay. This is 10 gauge automotive hookup wire. Way back in the day from Radio Shack. And you can see the difference. Um, the strands are actually thicker on this. The wire is, you know, um, got much less jacket on it. So that's the difference. Um, anyway, today what we're going to do is going to show you guys how I like to do these. Um, they're getting on the uh, DIY solar forum, and those guys like to argue about everything. They think they know everything, but they've never passed an amateur extra uh, exam. So, I, I take what they say with a grain of salt, and they think, oh, crimping is superior to soldering. Um, no, I don't really think so. And some hams don't think so either, uh, and some do. Either way, I don't care for crimping unless it's on really big wire. Like, we're talking ought too. Certainly 10-gauge wire is solderable. So, our little word to do with this, so we have our connector, okay? And we're going to take our wire... And we'll, we'll strip it back a little bit further than this. Um, I like to have a lot of wire in there. Now, I do this really kind of with a little bit of everything because of the insulation being as thick as it is. Uh, I just kind of work it around. And try not to nick the wires. And then I take my connector Okay, this one here, the male MC4. Screw it down in here like this. And then I, I disconnect it. This one here doesn't use the extra pieces. There's sometimes this piece is removable. Um, these are just cheap, real cheap. So take that. And then I get to. Uh, my connectors make sure you do not insert these incorrectly you will not be able to remove them without damaging them you have two kinds and what they basically do I get the other kind one of them goes inside the other one it's kind of like you know female male come on And these cheap ones, you need to check them and make sure they're okay before you use them. So they go inside like that. And you can end up putting the wrong connector in one of these, but not the other. And so the smaller one actually goes into the female one, which has kind of a male inside. And then this one here goes inside here. I have put them on backwards before, and I have pulled them back out, but these little uh, teeth here... What they do is they, they tear up the inside. But these ones are a little bit different. They've got metal in them in the inside. I don't know. Um, I haven't removed any of these kind. I've removed the, the better ones. So what I do with these is I take it and I twist it the direction of the wire until I have all the strands in there. And then I'll take my pliers and I'll carefully fold these over. And if you want, you know, you can crimp it at this point. You can get a pair of pliers, like these Dilwakis, and um, crimp them. And you put it right on here. Squeeze the crap out of it. And 
Yeah, you got what some guys consider good enough. Me? No. I'm not happy with that. That's not good enough. Um, especially cheap metal like this that, you know, can, you know, flex and bend and move. So what I do now is I take my little screwdriver and I'll rub a little flux on there. A little bit more. I need to get some RA flux. I don't have any. Um, we're trying to use up all my old stuff. So I use that. And then a, a good size soldering gun. If that doesn't work, I've got a bigger one. And I need to figure out where my solder is. Um, we've got several spools of solder. And I'm trying to use up the small stuff. Um, but we'll just use this for now. Uh, I don't use lead-free solder. I don't recommend it. I don't like it. I don't give a crap. I don't like lead-free solder. Did I say I don't like lead-free solder? Yeah, it's junk. Okay. Um, the only time that I will use solder that isn't basically lead is um, the tube sockets of a 3-500Z tube. If you solder it with regular solder, the solder can come out because it has too low of a melting temperature. And um, you need something with antimony or whatever they call it in there, um, or silver bearing solder. So I do use silver bearing solder for tube pins. And um, the way I like to do this is I just get in here. And blob it on. And then I just let it sit there and heat for a second. Add a little bit more. This wire will seriously wick up a lot of solder so you just make sure you get a good connection on there this actually looks like this might be lead free solder i can't remember the label's gone um anyway it'll work and then once you you can let it cool off and then snap this thing in there pretty warm so I'm not going to do both of these on camera I'm just going to do the one now I'm going to slide this piece up in here and this is what waterproofs these so then the other thing clamps down these little fingers press on that piece so I need to take like a popsicle stick or something I push it in all the way um, so that it's all the way down in there uh, before I run the other one on it. And you need to make sure that this thing's actually clicked all the way. Because this one has not. There we go. And now we can see in the end that it's not coming out. So these things can fool you, as you just saw. So you need to check them, because um, you know you don't want to have a problem later on. And then they do have like a little tool that will fit on these, but I find that like okay, I can grip it good enough. And then that's that's how you do it. So and you just do the other one the same way. And it's real simple. So now I have an extension, and male and female. Now, let me squeeze these to separate it. Waterproof, uh, IP65, I think they might say on them. Some of them do. Anyway, that's how you do these MC4s. Thanks for watching.